Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is your Pro Spec 10 list. Let's get this party started. All right, at number 10, we have Immortal Hulk number two, fifth print, the one in 25. Ultra, what's going on with this book? All right. Well, this one's definitely calmed down an awful lot from the initial hype it offered on its release. This right here is the one in 25 incentive of the fifth print of Immortal Hulk. This is a virgin variant of the original cover art for issue number two. Uh, Dr. Fry uh, makes his uh, first appearance in there, uh, making this a this this was a book that was blowing up like crazy to warrant the fifth print. Uh, but it's definitely calmed down. It's in a lull. And as you know, you like to buy in a lull, but it's an Alex Ross artwork, uh, virgin incentive. Uh, with a major Hulk villain's first appearance, so it's it's got all the check boxes for what makes usually a pretty successful uh, buy and hold. This seems to be the beginning of the beginning of Marvel uh, incentivizing uh, uh, second prints and fifth print, the fifth print one in twenty five variant, and all that kind of. It seemed to have started with this, if I'm not mistaken. I th there's Good other call. incentives before, but I think uh, you are right. This is where they started doing it heavily. Uh -huh. And it started happening an awful lot in this Hulk run. All right. Sounds good. At number nine, we have Uncanny in Humans 11. So with this book, you have the first appearance of Mosaic. And I really think this is a good play for a book because not only are we having a uh, uh, Miss Marvel Kamala Khan showing up in the in the Disney Plus series. We also can expect to see him connect other parts of the MCU together. So you also have Eternals and Humans. Like I think this is a great pick. Prices are low on this book. I remember when it first came out, it was like nearly impossible to find. Prices spiked up, but they've cooled down quite a bit, and they're easily found. And then there's even a second print for this book. All right. At number eight, we have Star Wars, Rise of Kylo Ren, the John Tyler Christopher action hero variant. Ultra, what's going on with this book? Oh, so as you guys know, I'm, I'm a big fan of these specifically, but what I notice is a market trend that is very alarming. I've been trying to wait for this book to cool down to be able to obtain a copy for cover price or close to it, because I missed the opportunity to obtain it at a cover price at release. As you know, Kylo Ren number one went four printings. So you have all those additional printings that came afterwards uh, to satisfy everybody in their, you know, their reading. But this book was grossly underordered, and it was one of the biggest misses of the action figure variant collectors who uh, are trying to piece together a set, maybe. Um, I'm noticing a commanding, extremely good pricing. And if you had a store that obtained it for $4 and cover price area, uh, it's right now currently a really good flip. All right. At number seven, we have Middle West number one, the one in 10. Ultra, what's going on with Andy's pick? Whoa. So Andy likes to throw that uh, independent curveball because that's, uh, that's, that's what he does. Um, this is a very interesting read. I actually just read it before we, we started recording. Um, the one in 10 incentive for it definitely has my attention as far as obviously being the opener for a story, but it's the one in 10 incentive on the number one issue on an image book. And I don't believe there were any other incentives uh, to go along with it. So uh, good read. Check your LCSs because this one may be a sleeper in, in your back issue bins. Uh, it looks like prices on this are just around, what, 20? So that's a really cheap buy-in. I remember when uh, when this book dropped, there was a little bit of hype on it beforehand. And going in on Wednesday to get it, the, the incentives were gone. And there was like one beat up copy of the like cover a like if i'm not mistaken it was an all black cover i think scotty young also did cover a but there was also a b or a c if i'm not mistaken uh they, they were all kind of hard to come by in the get-go it was kind of like a greyhound like it's great out of the gate but it wasn't much for stamina uh but now might be the, the lull to buy it in great stuff at number six we have iron heart number 12. Ultra, what's happening with this book? Oh, boy. So 
Uh, previous list maker Ironheart number nine uh, shows uh, Riri going to Wakanda. So here we have not only is she in Wakanda, but we also have a new Warriors alumni silhouette joining her. So it's an all girls team. Uh, final issue, very low order numbers. You know, people like to think that all these hot properties, like these hot first appearances and stuff like that, really you know outlasted. Uh, but their their sales figures would determine that they all dwindled. Uh, but hardcore readers and collectors definitely stayed on for the long haul. But this is the final issue of her first ongoing series as Ironheart. All right. At number five, we have Night Cry number one, 1994, Visual Anarchy. Steve, <laughs> what's going on yeah. with this book? So, so this is my the curveball I threw in there. So I bought a collection a few years ago that had a lot of 90s indie shock horror books in it. Out of all the books in the collection, this one struck me struck me as the most haunting, creepy, and just plain wrong. Um, it would never get published today, yet it's beautiful. Like it's the way it's rendered, and it appears photorealistic. Uh, I don't even know what's going on in this cover. I mean, clearly this guy has a butcher's apron on, and he he clearly supports mask wearing. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to do next. Um, but this one's all about the cover, um, though there is an early Evil Ernie appearance in here, as well as early Ed McGinnis artwork. I, I never see these type of books in stores, and if I did, I, I doubt they'd be in high grade. Um, and this is more about <laughs> this, this is more about the genre, right? This is about looking to the future because. Um, I have to think that these 90s indie shock horror books like this that don't get a lot of recognition, eventually, I think they'll become a collectible uh, genre like pre-code horror. And maybe this will be one of the sought after books. It, it's, um, it, it's, it's a flyer for sure. Uh, but um, I, I guess uh, other, other folks agreed with me. I didn't know how uh, other folks would react but but they they voted at number five so um i voted it very high i, I was i was shy dude he's bowling ball on her kind of on the way oh this left hand there on the way like i i had to look it up to find the cover because i've never heard of it and i saw it, i was like whoa and you're right you there there there's a, a few of them on they're probably 20 30 copies on ebay they're not they're not expensive 10 no. 15 dollars maybe uh but yeah man if most comic shops probably just can't put that out or put it on their wall. <laughs> or if I saw the half price books, I take it to the counter and go, Hey, you have to put this behind the counter. Cause if a kid is going right. through and something like that, like, uh, kind of like they had to, to do with pre-code horror, right? Like, uh, probably in the fifties. Right. Well, when you think about today's times and you mentioned, uh, a cover like this can't be done now. This right. is like the modern equivalent to pre-code horror. Yeah. All right, at number four, we have Ghost Rider number 21. Mercenot, what's going on with this book? All right, now this is uh, a book that I've been high on for quite some time, probably going on quite a few years. Ghost Rider number 21. Um, this is the first appearance of Michael Badalino. He's a uh, police lieutenant who, um, he's kind of, he's like, he's basically a rogue cop. Um, I. I liken him to uh, Eddie Brock by way of Frank Castle. He's a uh, he kind of does things his own way, and and this character later on becomes Vengeance, one of Ghost Rider's uh, main adversaries. And uh, what I like about this, it's not necess it's not even it's not like a cameo appearance or anything like that. He's prominent. Uh, Michael Badalino is prominent in the issue. Uh, they actually, what they do is at the beginning of the issue, they compare uh, the tactics of of uh, the police officer Badalino to that of Ghost Rider. And they even mention he will be one of Ghost Rider's uh, biggest, biggest, biggest uh, threats or biggest adversaries. And uh, what and what I really like about this book is that the buy-in is really, really cheap. I'm talking like maybe $3 at the most. And what's good is that this is a white cover. 
and you and because the buy-in is so low you'll be able to cherry pick those high grade you know bone white copies for dirt cheap nine times out of ten you'll find this in the dollar bin somewhere so that's what i really really like about this book there's a newsstand copy also absolutely mm -hmm. and funny thing i've only been able to find one newsstand at number three we have batman 638 so I've always uh, loved the, this cover, the second print. Um, this is the one where um, Jason Todd is revealed as the the Red Hood, and it's an homage or response to the first print cover where Batman's like, "No, it, it can't be, not you." And then you see on the second print, you know, there's Jason Todd take, taking off his Red Hood mask. Um, so. The upcoming Titan season three will be his first TV movie appearance. Uh, you know, obviously Red Hood's already popular in the fan community as a hero or anti-hero. And I think Titans is the tip of the iceberg for him entering the public consciousness as comic <clears throat> collectors and readers. We've known him for years. So I, I think there's a lot of room to grow for, for years and decades to come. Uh, Rawls average uh, about $27. So, that you know that that's in you know uh in my sweet spot uh 69.8s have sold since 2005 um and only once has a 98 cracked the $100 mark which is just just mind blowing um especially since this only had a little over a 6000 issue um print run according to comicron so um it's I, I myself have it in my personal collection, signed by um, Matt Wagner. I have them both um, in CGC. So it's funny how Jason Todd went from one of the most hated Robins to one of the most appreciated non-derivative Bat versions of the Bat, yep. uh, Bat family. So he, he's he's one of the most original versions of of the characters to come from the Bat family. Probably also the most traumatized. Definitely. I thought I killed him back in the '90s with my 75 cent call, but uh, <laughs> I think if I can point out, uh, I thought it was cool. I never noticed before, but in the reflection of the, the the Red Hood mask is a Batman in the second print, but it's David Bowie or Sean Penn. <laughs> uh, you caught it, man! You caught it. Call. Like a late late '70s. Maybe early seventies David Bowie, yeah. or Sean Penn. Now he looks he's looking rough. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help Sean Penn out, dude. At number two, we have Detective Comics five seventy six. Steve with a capital S. What's going on with this book tonight? Okay, so um, the Todd Father's cover to Batman four twenty three has been on fire recently, and and so that had me thinking about a few other. Todd uh, Batman covers. This one actually predates the Batman 423 cover. One, it's less stylized than uh, Batman 423. We actually see Batman rather than a shrouded figure. And that may be due, due to the influence of Pablo Marcus, who's co-credited uh, with creating this cover. Uh, second, Batman's firing a handgun. We just don't see that a lot. It's just not his thing, right? Um, though we do see it on the previous issues cover as well. Also, uh, third, there's some speculation associated with the year two story arc that the upcoming Batman film will be based on that. I, I don't know how much credence there is to that, but take it for what it's worth. Um, four, it's still cheap. It's under $25 raw. And just as a final note, Todd, unlike Batman 423, he also does the interiors on this book as well. All right. And at our number one spot tonight, we have Ghost Rider Blaze of Spirits of Vengeance, number nine. First night, what's going on with this book? Okay, so this is the second half of the book that I've been high on for years. Um, Ghost Rider and Blaze Spirits of Vengeance, number nine. So this is the first appearance of Michael Badalino as Vengeance, the uh, the big hulking character right right smack dab in the middle 
of the cover. Um, I really like this book. Um, it, as Ghost Rider becomes more and more and more popular, and he and as he becomes more mainstream and maybe possibly hits the MCU, uh, he's going to need a bad guy. And to me, he's probably Ghost Rider's best as far as um, as far as his rogues gallery. I see vengeance a lot like how I see uh, Venom. You know, he's, he's pretty complex. He's he's like a he fights for the innocent, but he kind of takes a little bit too far. You know what I mean? And he's a, and he's he's more than just a one off villain. And I think this guy can keep going and going as far as uh, live action goes. And um, again, the buy in on this is like two to three dollars and you, you'll be able to cherry pick just like with Ghost Rider 21. You can cherry pick uh, as many high grade copies as you like. Tuck them away and forget you have them.